Welcome to the Mobile Home Park Mastery Podcast, where you will learn how to identify, evaluate, negotiate, perform due diligence on, finance, turn around and operate mobile home parks. And now, here is your host, the fifth largest mobile home park owner in the United States, Frank Rolfe. Hot markets and the hard infrastructure bill. This is Frank Rolf, the Mobile Home Park Mastery Podcast. We're going to focus on the impact of the new hard infrastructure bill that has passed Congress and been signed into law. What markets will that affect and how will that affect the mobile home park industry? What is the hard infrastructure bill? Well, I think we all know what's in it. There's 173,000 miles of highway in the United States and 45,000 bridges, and they estimate about 20% of those need to be redone. So right off the bat, a lot of the money goes towards roads and bridges, but there's also going to be a lot of work done to railroads and water and sewer production. And we're going to add in a lot of broadband. We're going to reduce some airports and runways, ports, all kinds of things. And this was something that was passed with bipartisan support. It's a lot of money being spent, but at least you see something tangible, hopefully, for your money. But when I was reading the whole bill, it got me thinking, now, wait a minute, what is the real impact on this on the mobile home park industry? Well, let's start off by looking where the money is going by state. We're just going to look at the top 10 to save time because you'll see the general theme. The state that gets the most money out of hard infrastructure at $44.5 billion is the state of California. The second state, Texas, at $35.4 billion. New York at $26.9 billion. And Florida at $19 billion. What's interesting here, of those four states, three of those contain the largest number of mobile home parks in the U.S. Texas has the most parks. It's getting the second largest amount from infrastructure. California has probably the second number of parks, and it's got the first largest portion of infrastructure. And Florida's got the third most, and it's got the fourth most infrastructure. So right off the bat, the states that are the largest in mobile home parks are also getting the bulk of infrastructure. But then it gets more interesting. After that, you've got Illinois at $17 billion, Pennsylvania at $17 billion, New Jersey at $13 billion, Ohio at $12 billion, Georgia at $12 billion, and Michigan at $10 billion. All but one of those states, New Jersey, are also very, very large in mobile home park numbers. So it's kind of unusual that of the top 10 markets, eight of those 10 are in states which rank among the top largest as far as containing mobile home parks. The other thing I think people aren't really thinking about with this bill is where the people are going to live who do these jobs. Because when you go out and you try and spend $35 billion on construction projects in Texas, you know there will be people who migrate from other parts of the nation to do that. These jobs are supposed to be high paying. I don't know. I haven't seen what they're going to pay. But I imagine if you're paying people to mess around with concrete or up in the air with metal and welding and riveting, that they probably are fairly well paid. And a lot of people are going to migrate to those states. And where are those people going to stay? Well, you probably guessed it. Yes, they're going to probably stay in mobile home parks. That's always been how it's been as long as I've been in the business for 25 years now. Whenever you have a big construction project in a market, your mobile home park goes off the grid with demand because every worker is either going to live in his RV while he works on that project or wants to live in a mobile home. Many of them will be there for years and years. Some of these projects are so large, I imagine they may take a decade. So it's going to do great things for those states where they get the money because our end users of mobile home parks and RV parks will be among the most employed and our properties will be the most in demand. When someone is going to go to Texas to work on a a water plant, they're not going to buy a brick custom home. A, they can't afford it. And B, that's not something you would do if you're there for not, not a lifetime. But they sure are going to look at mobile home parks and RV parks. You better believe they are. So a lot of the money is going to go not only towards this infrastructure stuff, But you have to look at the impact on employment and who benefits from all those people. And I think our industry is very safe to say we'll be benefiting from those people more than about anybody else. The other thing you have to look at is where do all the tools come to make these infrastructure projects a reality? Where's the heavy equipment come from? Well, good question. Here's the answer. John Deere, it's headquartered in Illinois. Caterpillar, it's headquartered in Illinois. 
Look at where all of the companies that build big equipment, all the companies that build steel, where do they all come from? They all come from the Midwest and the Rust Belt. So all of these materials that will be used to do all these big projects, they're going to, again, foster employment and more economic strength in those flyover states, Great Plains, Midwest, and Rust Belt. That's where it's all going. It's not going out to those Western states. I don't know how they get conned into, into approving this thing, to be quite honest with you. If you look at the impact of this bill on states like Arizona and Nevada, it's, it's not much. That's because... They're newer, so they don't have a lot of the old roads and bridges and old water pipes to replace. They've got all new stuff. And the cities and the states with all the new stuff, with cities have been grown out of, you know, the last few decades, they benefit very, very little. And even then, they don't have any materials that are produced in those states that are used as tools in doing any of this. So the bottom line of it is that mobile home park states are huge winners here. Absolutely huge. Now, what else does it all mean? Well, I think it means going forward, when you go in and you replace all this stuff in the old flyover states and the old rust belt areas, it's going to tend to bring those areas back to life. So I think they're also going to be fostering kind of a redevelopment boom in these parts of the nation. And once again, that's a great thing for mobile home parks in these areas. If you take and you overlay where the money is going from this hard infrastructure bill onto the states that have the largest numbers of mobile home parks, they almost match identically. It's really amazing. You, it looks as though perhaps the mobile home park industry had to be the ones that created this bill to begin with. I doubt they did, but it certainly would have that appearance. The bottom line to it all, that one more mega trend I'm happy to be in the mobile home park to enjoy I don't think you're going to see such a boom as this since the whole idea of the Opportunity Zone. And it somewhat fizzled. Opportunity Zone got derailed by people starting to lose confidence the program would continue on. In this case, to my knowledge, these funds are pretty much guaranteed. I'm not sure this is a program that you can stop at this point. I think that train just keeps running down the tracks. So you're going to be dumping huge amounts of money overnight into areas and regions that haven't seen a whole lot of money in a long, long time. You're going to be rebuilding these old Midwest, Great Plains, rust-built markets into just like new. In fact, they'll be newer than any other city and states out there. You're going to be offering massive numbers of jobs to mobile home park and RV park residents. Those are the people who do those types of jobs. You're going to be spurring on a huge amount of new manufacturing of all the tools that go into these things, such as from Caterpillar and John Deere. And again, all those jobs come from the Midwest. And in so doing, you're going to be putting a giant injection of money and jobs and future into markets that are very, very important to the mobile home park industry. The bottom line to it all, the hard infrastructure bill, really good news once again for the mobile home park industry. It's an industry that just can't ever seem these days to ever be on the wrong side of the megatrends, whether it's the great migration, the great resignation. It doesn't matter. We win every time. So good news for all those who understood all along that mobile home parks were the ultimate contrarian hedge, the glimmer of the future, the bastion of affordable housing, best real estate sector in the United States by far. This is Frank Roth, the Mobile Home Park Mastery Podcast. Hope you enjoyed this. Talk to you again soon. Thank you for listening to the Mobile Home Park Mastery Podcast. Be sure to visit us at mhpmastery.com to subscribe to the show, read our show transcriptions, and access all of our great information on mobile home park investing.